the truth of the carnivore diet. So I thought now would be a good time to make this video because it's World Carnivore Month and this might help anybody that's new to the diet and who's sort of just getting started. So just a disclaimer, this is the truth as I see it from my personal experience. This is not um, diet advice. I'm not a nutritionist. Do your own research and consult a professional before implementing changes to your diet. So just get that out there to start with. What is the carnivore diet? So it is essentially just a very strict elimination diet. You're eliminating everything that isn't meat. So on the carnivore diet, you're going to eat beef, pork, lamb, chicken or poultry and fish. So you're eliminating everything that isn't those foods, right? So in the process of doing that, you're eliminating plant foods and I mean, you could do the carnivore diet with processed foods, but in my experience, you're eliminating processed foods as well. So these are meats that are not processed. So why would you do the carnivore diet? I first got introduced to the carnivore diet by Jordan and Michaela Peterson, and they, they adopted the diet for a number of reasons. So the reasons you might be interested are mental health and mental clarity. So it can be implemented as a way of treating depression. So if you've got depression, it might help your mental health. You've got autoimmune diseases like arthritis and digestive issues like irritable bowel syndrome, food intolerances and metabolic dysfunction. So diabetes and insulin resistance. So that's a wide range of reasons why you might be getting into the carnivore diet. And then another side kind of benefit that might be your main reason for adopting it is just more energy and weight loss. So burning fat. That's usually the reason people get into diets, to be fair. You might not be interested in the other health benefits, but losing weight is your main motivation. And in my personal experience, it does address all of those issues. So I first adopted it for mental health. I had depression and I thought that that would be of benefit and it did address that. And in the process of doing the carnivore diet, I've realized that the foods we eat massively influence our mental health and just even just clarity. So if you've got brain fog, this is gonna help. Now, I can't. I read a book on the gut microbiome, so your digestive system, and I can't remember what the number was, but you've got about, I think it's even more or the same amount of neurons in your digestive system as in your brain. And they communicate with each other through the gut-brain axis. It's your vagal nerve that takes signals. So thoughts, that's where the, the term gut instincts come from. Or I've got a, you know, like you, you just get a gut instinct. So that's a real thing. There's literally neurons that are communicating. And it's the bacteria that live in your gut that are going to communicate certain messages. And now that might be a cause of depression. Because if you've got gut dysbiosis, which is when the gut microbiome, the uh, bacteria that are living there, are sending off weird signals. So anyway, so carnivore diet in my experience i found when i first introduced it so there's kind of varying degrees you can do jordan jordan and michaela peterson are at the extreme far end of how to implement the carnivore diet so they eat literally just beef and salt and drink water so that's as extreme as you can get and then on the other end it would be eating a variety of different meats so lamb beef fish poultry so that's your two that's on a strict carnivore diet now we'll talk about like the next the next step up on the spectrum but so that's strict carnivore when i first adopted the diet i did three weeks of just beef and salt like the petersons do 
and I found it very it was a very good experience but I don't think it's necessary unless you've got serious autoimmune diseases and serious health issues I don't think you need to adopt it that strict to get the benefits so in my experience I adopted carnivore diet just beef and the mental clarity was the most striking thing that I found but also I had digestive issues kind of like irritable bowel syndrome symptoms and the more foods I eliminated from my diet the the better those symptoms got and I've managed to treat and manage it through diet and I'll introduce things back into the diet but I find beef is always the thing I can come back to because an elimination diet works by eliminating everything except for one food so if you so for me if I just eat beef and I know on beef I have mental clarity and I don't have the irritable bowel syndromes like irritable bowel syndrome symptoms that's beef that gives me a baseline to work from and then from there I can add foods back in so then if I add apples and I get symptoms again and I get brain fog then I'm like oh maybe it's the apples go back to beef and then you know so all an elimination diet you could eliminate you can use any food for an elimination diet so you could eliminate everything but apples and just eat nothing but apples and see how you feel but for some reason beef from my research and my experience is the food it's it's anti-inflammatory and i don't think anybody is going to be allergic to beef or have food intolerances to beef i don't know why that's the case and i'm not attached to the carnivore diet so if it was kale or broccoli you eliminate everything and just eat broccoli i would do like i literally i'm not bothered which way it is it just happens to be beef from what i've seen online and my own experience and my research so you eliminate everything and the reason i would use beef in my opinion i use grass-fed beef and i use the cheapest option because you're eating quite a lot of it is to get ground beef so beef mince it's the cheapest way And the reason you do that is there's downsides and drawbacks to other meats. So take fish for example. Larger fish like salmon or tuna accumulate mercury because they're higher up on the food chain. So they eat other foods that have mercury in them and then you're, you can potentially give yourself mercury poisoning. Sardines are going to be your best option if you do want to implement fish because they're small fish, they accumulate less mercury. As far as I know, all sam all sardines are wild caught and wild caught fish as opposed to farmed fish are much better so something like salmon most salmon is farmed and just the way they're farmed is not very good you'd have to i think there's documentaries on netflix about farmed salmon but check that out you don't want to eat salmon so if you go and fish sardines are your best option with chicken there's issues with chicken. I think this was in Dr. Lustig's book. When you, when you feed animals on grains, so corn. I, I can't remember what it said. I think it said, essentially, you are what you, you are what you eat, and you are what you're eating ate. So. They can, with non-grass-fed animals they can feed them a certain percentage of plastic they're literally allowed to and plastic is toxic so it gets stored as fat so i've heard of them using cement dust and brick dust as well they'll feed their animals a certain percentage of plastic or um, industrial dust that causes them to store fat and it helps them put on weight so it helps their animals gain weight which is obviously beneficial for the farmers so or for the industry, the people selling the meat, their animals gain weight quicker and they have to feed them less real food, so that's cheaper. Chickens that are grass, that are grain fed, often result, I think in Dr. Lustig's book, he said they kind of tested people and it was as if they'd eaten a grain diet, but they were eating mainly chicken, but it's because the chickens were fed grain. Anyway, that's a bit of a side tangent and uh, that wasn't a very helpful point but from my experience I've found 
grass-fed beef, if you can get it, is the best option. The next best option is non-grass-fed beef. Anything else, there's usually issues due to how the animals are raised. Another point is ruminant am animals. So if you just Google ruminant animals, most of those are going to be, that's going to be your best option in terms of anti-inflammatory and not going to cause digestive issues. So what was my experience with the carnivore diet? Obviously mental clarity, the weight loss is inevitable. If you eat a carnivore diet, you are going to lose body fat. It's just, it's kind of like, there's no question and it works very effective and you can eat you're not in a calorie deficit you're eating what your body requires in meat and that looks like a lot of meat so when you work out your daily caloric need you can eat that much meat and it's it's fine and it's sustainable jordan and michaela peterson have proved that you can do that for a long period of time obviously this is a fairly new way of eating to westerners so we don't know, there's very little scientific long-term evidence on how this kind of plays out. But in my experience, it's been very beneficial. The bad sides, which I don't hear very often, if at all, that I've experienced and friends that have done the carnivore diet have also experienced, is it affects your sleep. So I was sleeping less. And Jordan Peterson kind of said that mentioned that as a good thing like oh i don't have to sleep as much but i think eight hours of sleep is very important and anytime you're sleeping less that's not a good thing in my opinion and i found my sleep my sleep dropped right down and that was a problem for me and i believe it was due to a lack of carbs and the other side of that was my libido and sex drive went down to basically nothing and i think that is again due to carbs because it, I think it negatively affected the hormones and testosterone, the testosterone estrogen balance. I, I haven't done much research on this, but as far as I can tell, it's due to carbs. So you do need carbs, eliminating all of them. Maybe when your body adapts to running off ketones instead of glycogen or glucose, maybe there's a switch that happens, but because I didn't leave it long enough, I didn't adapt so maybe that would come back and that wouldn't be a problem but in my experience I've done three weeks of carnivore and I stopped doing it because of the libido issues so what's my conclusion from adopting I've done this multiple times I've done three weeks at a time I've done smaller stints as well week here and there and my conclusion was just Use it, as an eliminate, uh, use it as an elimination diet if you do have digestive issues. But you want to try and add in as many foods as you can. So having a variety, a, a wide variety of foods you eat, I think is good. But some foods, for me, I was trying to identify food intolerances. And if that's the case for you, go to just beef, do that for a week and see how you feel. And add in foods that you want to start with low inflammatory foods and then work your way up and just keep adding foods and the more foods you can add back in to a balanced diet the better but to some people that might be nothing so for jordan peterson it's he tries to add in anything and it has negative effects so he's left just with beef and you can survive on beef so that's your baseline anything extra is going to be beneficial and what i've found to be the things that i can add back in are some fruits and these are low glycemic fruits so berries when i start adding mango i do eat mango but i notice there's brain fog associated with it so low glycemic fruits raw dairy i did have issues with dairy before and this might be another reason why you're doing it conventional dairy from supermarkets is pasteurized and homogenized and the animals are often um you know heavily drugged with antibiotics and things to keep them because a lot of commercial farms they're not the healthiest animals so they use um, drugs to keep them alive essentially 
and you are consuming that. So you want raw dairy. So when you pasteurize and homogenize dairy, you're boiling it, which kills all the enzymes and filtering it through a high pressure filter which denatures it again. So, and this is why you can have milk sitting on a shelf for three weeks. Some brands of milk can sit on a shelf for that long because it's essentially just white water. Whereas raw dairy isn't. That's, that's natural as it occurs in nature and it's very healthy. So raw dairy is hard to get a hold of in the UK. I found I can get raw cheese in my local supermarket and I can get raw dairy from farms but in the winter it they produce less milk and it's yeah it's just difficult to get hold of but if you're looking for a raw dairy to add um, I would recommend Parmigiano Reggiano I'm not Italian so I probably didn't pronounce that very good but that is raw cheese and it says unpasteurized on the label so that's when you can add eggs I add back in and that's fine honey and then I've put in brackets low lectin or low defense chemical vegetables so I'm not against veg I'm not against any diet or vegan or anything like that but I can't personally tolerate veg and I would add in low lectin low defense chemical vegetables but I just haven't found any I've tried reintroducing them and I haven't found any that I can actually eat without seeing negative side effects I would eat all veg if I could, but that hasn't been my experience. So my conclusion from, I've spent, it's over a year moderating my diet and testing things and just experimenting what effect different foods have. And it's been a lot of trial and error and a lot of things haven't worked. So in the beginning, I started off as a vegetarian. I was using fully organic, plant-based supplements essentially living fuel was the one I used and I think it's probably a great product but I almost poisoned myself with it because I I can't tolerate vegetables and plant food as far as I can tell and I think it's just because I'd wrecked my digestive system with ultra processed foods from a young age for a long time so for you that might not be the case you might be a lot healthier than me and you can tolerate and thrive on plant foods but my conclusion is, when you eliminate everything, you're essentially eliminating processed foods, which is beneficial anyway. So this doesn't have to be carnivore to do that. You could eliminate all processed foods and just go on a plant-based diet, and that benefit is going to still be the same. And you end up, what I've ended up with, with the carnivore plus foods I've reintroduced, is what I now deem to be the best diet, which is single ingredient foods as found in nature minimally processed if at all processed i think cooking is a process as well so you have to process them to some degree but and that doesn't have to be carnivore you could do that fully plant-based but in my experience the defense chemicals disrupt the gut and i can't do that so for you yours may include veg or maybe predominantly veg and i believe people's genetic makeup and metabolism is catered towards different types of foods anyway de determined by your ancestry so i've spoke about this before but where your ancestors lived and what they fr what they ate most you're going to be predetermined by that so for example my friend has italian heritage and he can eat pasta all day long i eat pasta and get brain fog he can deal with the heat like we, we climbed up Mount Snowdon and it was really cold and the conditions were really bad. I can deal with the cold fine because my heritage is more European, colder climate, and his is more Italian. So he can sit in the sauna for hours and I'm flaking out. We go up Snowdon and it's cold. I'm fine with like just a t-shirt on. I'm like just walking through like a Viking and he's flaking out. So, and that's the same with diet he can tolerate more foods that I can't and that's going to determine what you choose to eat. So the main conclusion is eat real foods, single ingredient foods, minimally processed 
and you're basically that that's the optimal diet as far as I can tell and I'm getting more and more comments of people saying oh I've adopted this real food diet 10 months ago and they list all the positive benefits and I told my friend about it and he's you know he was overweight and he's gone back to his 20 year old weight so it just gives me more and more conviction and it's just obvious it just makes sense um Western A Price made the conclusion that Anytime he went to Western A. Price, I've spoke about him before as well, but he travelled round to different tribes and he found anywhere the tribe adopted a Western diet, which is highly processed foods of grains, sugar, things like that, had all kinds of health issues, including dental and physical health problems, diabetes, heart attack, all the Western diseases, or so-called Western diseases. Anywhere they had a natural, traditional diet, which was either which was foods found in nature they didn't have those issues and that's just obvious you know you eat food provided by nature we've just been brainwashed to think that cereal toast um just all the western foods we eat they're not even real foods but we think to eat any other way is strange so that's my experience eat real food single ingredient the other thing is, I saw a meme the other day, a little picture. Uh, it might have been Sean Baker put this on his Instagram. It was like, the first picture is a picture of donuts and pizza. And the caption is, When I ate like this, nobody was worried about my... Uh, like, when I, when I ate like this, nobody questioned it. And then the picture below is meat, like red meat, chicken, eggs, cheese and milk. Now I eat like this, everyone's concerned about my health. Like, people think it's weird to eat real foods. So, yeah, that's my experience with carnivore. So, Western A. Price, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration is a book you might want to check out if you want to do more research on that. On the raw dairy thing, on the milk side of things... Oh, what's his name? Somebody's cat's... A guy uh, did experiment on cats with raw dairy and pasteurised dairy. So he gave them gave some cats raw milk and others pasteurised milk. Bearing in mind, most of the milk we all have access to is pasteurised. And he found within four generations of cats, the cats couldn't reproduce. Pottinger's cats. Yeah, within four generations, the cats couldn't reproduce. Now, we're probably four generations in to drinking pasteurized milk and fertility is becoming an issue you've got people like elon musk saying we're not having enough kids so that again i'm not a conspiracy theorist i just deal with things that i see but i know some people might question that so we won't go into that but this was about carnivore so yeah like i say i'm not attached to any single diet I just do what works for me so and if there's something I'm missing like I'm always open to uh, new ideas and new ways of thinking I just think I've found what works for me if there's something else then I'm, I'm open to suggestions I'm always willing to try new things but yeah be interesting to see how you guys get on what your experience has been and any I mean positive or negative, I don't want to just filter out and not listen to the negative, but if you've got positive stories, like for me, it helped my mental health, it's helped me manage um, digestive issues, and the carnivore diet, along with adding in real foods that I can tolerate, has been very beneficial. I've lost weight, So, so yeah, hope that helps. Let me know how world carnivore month is going for you and what how you're implementing it are you doing strict carnivore just beef just chicken adding in fruits let me know have a good one see you in a bit